Welcome back to Lit Sports Online, everyone. We're recapping the Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor super fight that happened on Showtime Pay Per View. I got a special guest, uh, Pat, here with me, our MMA expert, so to say. And, you know, this fight, it ended in uh, the 10th round, technical knockout for Floyd Mayweather. I was actually at Dave and Buster's watching the fight. Pretty interesting atmosphere there. And I don't know, Pat, to me, it just looked like Conor McGregor started really strong, kind of punched himself out, maybe wasn't conditioned to go all the way in this fight. What do you think? I, I would agree. I also think that's part of the strategy of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, it typically is one of the things that he does is to take the first couple of rounds to feel out other fighters and kind of get their game plan. And then ba he, he's like a computer. He downloads all of the information that the other person is throwing at him. And then after a while, he just finally builds that program to just say, I got it. Now I can start turning it on, putting on the pressure, doing my game plan, and putting the guy out of there. Yeah, I mean, was there anything, I'll tell you what surprised me in this fight, because I wasn't sure exactly what to expect, I mean, I kind of expected Floyd to win, yeah. <laughs> but just because, you know, you're talking about a guy that was undefeated boxing versus a guy that hadn't really been in a boxing ring before, at least not in a very long time, Yeah. and uh, I was surprised though how well Conor McGregor was boxing him early on, I mean, he was actually winning rounds early on. Yeah, I agree. I think, personally, I think he won the first three rounds. I think on the official scorecards, there was one judge that gave him the first three rounds. Uh, the unofficial judge, which they have as, as a person to reference throughout the fight and see what, how they're scoring it, he had it actually the first three rounds from McGregor as well, which I agreed with. And I think a lot of that stems from the fact that his striking is something that Mayweather hadn't really seen before. I mean, you know, boxing in an MMA is a little different than boxing in, you know, a boxing ring. And yeah. a lot of that stems from the fact that MMA fighters are looking out for things like knees to the head or knees to the solar plexus or a takedown. So a lot of times they won't fully sit down on and fully extend and turn over their punches. And as a result, they try to like keep their center a little more and their punches come from slightly different angles than Mayweather is commonly seen. And so I think that along with the fact that Conor McGregor is tends to fight at a much longer range than Mayweather does, partly because of his karate style and partly because of the fact that they're looking out for kicks in MMA. So he, he's used to fighting at a longer range, and I think that Floyd was kind of waiting to see what Connor, how what Connor was going to do and react after he kind of got it down. You know, And Connor is really good at keeping people at that distance. We particularly see that in MMA. Yeah, another thing that was really interesting to me is that you saw the referee stepping in it quite a few times because, you know, something would happen like McGregor would, you know, maybe hit him on the back of the head or something. And that happened a couple times. And when I was looking at the judges' scorecards, it didn't look like they ever deducted any points from McGregor, like, for doing that. Like, there was, like, but everyone I was watching the fight with was all like, oh, he's fighting dirty. Uh. They're like, <laughs> but they didn't, like, dock any points or anything. Like, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, he didn't do anything that was illegal, per se, that I could see. I mean, there's some shots in there that were kind of questionable, but a lot of it is the fact that, you know, what do you expect to happen when you kind of turn away from somebody as they're punching you? If you turn away when they're mid-punch, they're not going to be able to pull the punch back and make sure they only hit you right on the side of the head. And so some of them landed a little further back than you would like to see, but he wasn't overtly intentionally doing anything illegal. Yeah, that's and that can kind of cloud things because I was wondering like, okay, if you're in a boxing match and maybe like in boxing, I guess it's not really legal like hit someone in the back of the head like that. But if someone is it a valid defense to just turn your back to somebody like that? That can't be right, you know. In boxing, it almost is, and I think a lot of why Floyd did that is because if he would have stayed in front of Connor and kept the you know the kind of almost grappling exchanges, but it's more of a clinch going then that gives connor more of a chance to kind of muscle floyd around a little bit more but as soon as floyd turns his back they're obviously not in a position where anything can really happen and so the ref has to step in and connor is still sitting there trying to figure out something that he can achieve in that position but he, he really couldn't because the ref would st the step in rightfully so i think and you know stop it from connor throwing those little rabbit punches and accidentally hitting him back of the head yeah and so uh, with the technical knockout in the 10th round, I got some questions about that. Number one, do you think the ref was right to stop it at that point in time? And number two, is that how you're expecting the fight to end? 
I can see why he stopped it, and I can also see why people think he shouldn't have stopped it, because no, McGregor didn't go down. No, he wasn't super wobbly on his feet. He looked extremely fatigued, which is understandable, considering that was the longest fight of his career. And he, while he wasn't really answering anything, he per- perceivably could have you know, gone to the corner and come back out for the next round and been a little fresher. That being said... I think it was a good stoppage. I think at that point in the fight, we had already seen what was going to happen. Floyd had kind of started to run away with it, and Connor didn't have much of an answer. Floyd was just landing right hand after right hand, power shot after power shot. I mean, in the sixth or seventh round, they put out a stat that said he was landing 56% of his power shots, which is kind of par for the course. And anything in that fight that's not a jab is a power shot. So he, I don't think that Connor was going to come back and really win any more rounds let alone win the fight yeah and i I just kind of look back at how people were predicting this fight to go and most people uh, at least the ones that knew something about boxing were all predicting floyd to win Mm -hmm. um now they uh, there's a lot of people that thought that this fight wasn't going to go very far there's gonna be a knockout relatively early on even both the fighters thought that or at least they said that (laughs) um but i always thought that like my assumption was floyd could win like, at the end by unanimous decision. I, I didn't think he'd actually get the knockout on Connor, and, I mean, a technical knockout's not the same as actually knocking him down and getting the 10 mm-hmm. count, but uh, that's kind of the way I saw things. And then after the fight, uh, I, I thought it was interesting what Connor said, that, like, he's, you know, Floyd, he's not that fast, he's not that strong, but boy, is he composed. And I think, like, that's kind of what you're getting with a, a Hall of Fame boxer that's undefeated. Yeah, definitely, especially if you watch him in the corner. You know, if you looked at the corner cams in the respective corners, you would see towards the the 5th, 6th, 7th rounds, Connor is in the corner looking a little a little worn, you know, a little tired and his 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 whole corner is just like, "Come on, man, let's keep doing this well. I like this. Let's keep going. You just got to push and all this stuff." And then Floyd's corner is Floyd sitting there just looking around, smiling at the camera, you know, all these different things and his dad's just sitting there going, when are you gonna turn it on? He's like, "What are you? What are you doing? You're just you're screwing around out there. You know, why don't you do what you got to do? Do what you want to do." And Floyd's like, I, "I will," you know. But I think that's where it comes from. It's just the forty nine, you know, forty nine and zero in boxing, and I think well over a hundred fight, amateur fights. That's what you get. You get that composure. You're used to that moment. You're used to the pressure, and it just doesn't really affect or break you. And I don't think that's the case with Conor. I don't think it broke him, but I think that. You know, that magnitude and that distance and long of a fight, especially with the fact that he had a higher output than he normally does in an MMA match, I think that he was just super fatigued at the end of the fight, and I think that Floyd just was better conditioned for the sport and better composure. Yeah, it looked to me like both fighters had a strategy going in for Connor. You know, it seemed like he really thought he was going to get the early knockout on him in order to win, and that's what he was going for. But unfortunately, he ran out of gas, punched himself out, I think Floyd, on the other hand, kind of had the opposite strategy of let's see what he can bring to me, and then eventually he's going to get tired. And I'm going to put him away. It seemed like that's how, it, and that's how it panned out. Yeah, and that's the, one of the first things that Floyd said in inside the ring. You know, in the interview, was he said that the, our plan was to let Connor go in there, throw a lot of power shots, let him tire himself out, and then just put it on him in the later rounds. And that's kind of what I expected to happen. I didn't expect Floyd to get Connor out of there, you know, inside of a round. One of the things I thought might happen would be that towards the end and, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th rounds, well, obviously not the 12th round, considering what I'm about to say, but I was thinking that he might just get battered in a round and not be able to answer the bell for the next one. You know, I didn't think Floyd was going to knock him out cold. I didn't think anything like that violent was going to happen. But I did think that as the fight went on, it would just... Floyd would run away with it and just start to overwhelm Connor, which is what we saw. Yeah. The last thing I really want to talk about is like how this fight was marketed, actually, because looking for, for my own personal opinion, I, this was a fight I really wanted to see. I was a lot more intrigued by it than even like the, uh, like I saw the Pacquiao and, and Mayweather fight, but I would even more wanted to see this fight. And I think it was partially because it's two guys from like different sports colliding, essentially. And I also think it had a lot to do with the personalities as well. There was so much trash talking before this fight yeah. and all the press conferences. And it seemed like, like, I like how they stage it. It was almost like the WWE in a way, like with all, with all the trash talking and all that. Like, what do you make of 
the build-up that happened to this fight, why so many people want to watch it? I think it was a couple reasons. I think, first off, yes, the trash talk. Conor McGregor has kind of brought, like, a, a WWE-esque, like, grandiose, trash-talking, giant personality to MMA that didn't really exist before. And taking that and putting it against Floyd Money Mayweather. You know, he's not pretty boy Floyd anymore. He's not, like kind of quiet and night he's money mayweather he has this personality he has this character essentially that he puts out there and the two clashing personalities just made for a ton of shit talk a ton of just excessive over-the-top press conferences and i think another thing that made it interesting is mayweather as much as the pacquiao mayweather fight was something that everyone wanted to see it ended up being kind of a stinker it was a boring fight not many people like thought it was a fun thing to watch yeah with the exception of maybe a lot of you know people who are really into boxing but floyd acknowledged that in the lead after both after the fight and in the lead up to this fight and said i promise you guys i'm going to bring something different i'm gonna make this fight worth it and when you like hear that and then you look at connor's style and how he's a bigger dude and you have to say okay he's not particularly a boxer he has to bring kind of an aggressive style to even have a chance. Yeah. All of those things just made for what you have to assume is going to be a fun, not only clash of personalities, but clash of fighting styles. And we didn't see Floyd's, like, typical fighting style. We didn't see him do his Philly shell where he just kind of backs up a lot and has a lot of really good defense and doesn't let people hit him and then, you know, hits him back with counter strikes. We saw him coming forward and just putting his hands up, getting in Connor's face and throwing bombs. And I think that that is a result of Floyd consciously making the decision to put on a more exciting fight. And the last thing that made this very exciting was the fact that it was sort of framed as an MMA versus boxing fight, which is a debate that's been going on for years and years, and the only time we ever got to see anything like that was James Tony versus Randy Couture, which, if you saw it, not a great fight. You know, James Tony talked all this crap about how he's going to knock somebody out, he's afraid he's going to kill somebody with four-ounce gloves, and how he's training grappling. Then Randy Couture went in there, did a high school level, not high school level, but a high school takedown with an ankle pick, the easiest takedown he could go for without getting anywhere near punching range, put him down, punched him a couple times, and then decided to be a nice guy and put him to sleep. So the, the MMA versus boxing aspect of this was super exciting because it's an MMA fighter that we know can box and we know actually has a chance in a boxing ring, whereas the boxer coming over to the MMA, like to the cage, doesn't really stand much of a chance in my opinion yeah and i guess that's a good point as well in addition to all the trash talk and all that maybe people were just expecting a little more out of this fight than with pacquiao because they knew the type of fighting style connor was going to bring you know he wasn't going to allow floyd to just dance around the ring the entire match he was going to get in there and, and take some shots and clearly floyd had a different game plan in mind as well so it was definitely a more entertaining fight Really enjoyed it. Uh, the one thing is that, uh, I'll go back to this, Conor McGregor, he's what, 29 years old? He's 26 or 27, he's very young. Okay, he's in his 20s, Floyd, 40 years old. It still just, it gets me that Conor couldn't show up with the same level of like conditioning to go the full distance. I mean, I get that he's used to MMA with just like a small amount of rounds and, and they go quicker and all that, but... Man, you would just think that a guy that's 40 would uh, to, to la have more stamina than the other guy. It's kind of crazy. It's it's pretty interesting. and it's, It was kind of expected, I think, in a way, because Floyd's spent nothing but his entire life do, or doing nothing except for conditioning his body for boxing. His dad is a bo pro boxer. His uncle was a great pro boxer. They have been teaching this kid how to box since he was since he could stand so his entire life has been spent conditioning himself for this one physical endeavor and connor has been conditioning himself for something different they're longer rounds with a shorter overall fight so it's a longer burst with mm -hmm. like way less rest cumulatively and so it's i, I kind of think of it as like saying take the sprinter and put him in a marathon Yes, he's a runner. Yes, he's been doing this his entire life. He's super well conditioned, but he has to go. It's totally different, like timing circumstances. So it's a lot more aerobic versus anaerobic, uh, you know, movement and exercise because he's not having to push as hard for a longer period of time over a shorter interval total. You know. 
Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, I'm not sure I have many more questions to ask. I mean, is there anything else you want to add about this fight or about perhaps the, the future of boxing and MMA? Uh, not much. I mean, it was a fun fight. It was the most fun Mayweather fight I've seen. I think, um, I think McGregor lived up to any expectations anyone could have had. I think it's a win on both sides. It was the biggest boxing fight of all time. I think it did six and a half million pay-per-views. Both guys made, you know, well over a hundred million dollars. It was, it was the spectacle that we wanted it to be. And I can just hope that, uh, McGregor goes back and gets back in the cage and continues his dominance in MMA because it's, it's what he's best at. Indeed. Two uh, well-respected fighters, and what an amazing fight it was. Lasting 10 rounds with a Hall of Fame boxer. Nothing to, nothing to be ashamed of at all. Definitely not. 0-0 oh no, going 10 rounds with the best boxer of all time is pretty incredible. So that's it, and thanks for tuning in to Lit Sports Online. Make sure you subscribe and that's it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> you guys are so unprofessional. <laughs> I see Alex back there, like, rubbing his nipples while I'm talking. It was super weird. <laughs>